Hey folks, welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. We're up in Vilas County today with two professional guides and we're going to learn about weed edge fishing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These fish are all in our harbors. Close to 14 there. Are you having fun? I'm having a blast. Fleet Farm presents John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Fleet Farm, the ultimate fishing headquarters. Yes, folks, back up in St. Germain, Wisconsin with our buddy Rob Mantine. What we're going to talk about today is summertime weed line walleyes. And uh, this is really a great technique that works everywhere in the Midwest. But your bait of choice is the shiver minnow. Right, yeah, exactly, John. You know, snap jigging those, those heavy shiver minnows along the weed edge, uh, it's a great way, it's a fun way to catch fish. Um, you know, you get aggressive bites from it. You can cover a lot of water and very effective. And is it more of an impulse strike by the fish or are they yeah. hungry or what? Yeah, no, it, it triggers fish sometimes. I mean, a lot of times, you know, they'll they'll hit it on the drop. Sometimes they pin it to the bottom. Um, but it, it's amazing the number of species that will actually bite it too. I mean, you'll, we're going to catch some small little perch on them, uh, you know, walleyes, but it's, it's more of an aggressive, you know, make them type bite a te uh, technique. So what we're going to do during this show is show how to find the walleyes on the weed edge edges, how to use the shiver minnow, and we're going to catch some walleyes. Exactly. All right. Hey, folks, we'll show you more about what we're using and how we're using it. All that coming up right after this. They say things aren't built like they used to be. Tell that to John Johnson, the craftsman behind Recon Boats. He and his small team make each boat by hand, maintaining the highest standards. Every shred of fiberglass, every stitch of upholstery, every latch, hinge, and switch. It's all in the details, which is why the angler is at the forefront of the design philosophy for every recon boat. Recon boats, made by craftsmen, built for fishermen. I'll tell you what, folks, I've been a proud user of Amsoil for many years, and us sportsmen a lot of times not only have a truck, but a boat, an ATV, a snowmobile. And how do you figure out which Amsoil product to use in each machine? Yeah, that can be a challenge sometimes, and, you know, we make it easy. We've got a lookup guide. You just go to Amsoil.com. You put in your vehicle, whatever it may be, whether it's a boat, a wheeler, a truck, a trailer, whatever. Um, you pick out your product. It tells you how much and which product to put in. Real simple. And one thing I want to mention, too, Amsoil does a ton of research before you even put the product on the market. You make sure that it's the best. That's correct. It's years in the making for a product to launch. There's a ton of research and development to make sure that it's going to protect like it's supposed to. And folks, to find the Amsoil you want, go to Amsoil.com. Welcome back, folks. A chilly June morning, and uh, we have a co-guide today, Will Bueller, who hey guides up here in the in the northern section of the of Wisconsin, and he is originally from Racine, my area. So, hey, fishing these walleyes on the weed edges um, with these shiver minnows, the first thing is to find the fish, and you love the the, the hummingbird mega live. Yeah, the mega live is awesome. Rob's using the the side imaging there, and then once we get near the fish, we're oh, able to, some. to pinpoint some fish. Yeah, we got some on the screen here. We're going to toss these shiver minnows at these fish and see if we can get them How to react. How many are down there right now? Uh, we're seeing anywhere pods of between 5 and 15 fish at a time and they kind of just scoot in and out of the weeds and, and we're going to try and pitch at some fish and get them in the net. That's cool. So when you find the fish on, on the on the Hummerbird Mega Live, you put it in spot lock and fish the spot? Absolutely, yeah. That, that way we can kind of scoot around this pole and, and pinpoint our cast right on those fish. That, uh, that Mega Live has changed fishing, hasn't it? Oh my gosh, it, it's pretty awesome. It uh, You can see fish react to different lures. And, and change as needed. It's uh, it's a pretty cool tool. There we hey, go, John. Look at that. Robbie's going to be the first to connect on the old shiver minnow. Actually, I threw a plastic around. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay, you switched her up. Yeah. All right, you need the net? I do. Okay, here you go. Will, go up there, buddy. You're younger than I am. Ooh, that's a dandy oh, there walleye, we go. Rob. Nice job, buddy. And that is a typical weed edge walleye, huh? Yeah, we were just kind of searching searching along here and I just since we had two shivers going I thought I'll throw a jig in a plastic and uh, obviously 
Holy cow. Obviously, he wanted it. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish. So when you got three guys in the boat, it's a good idea to try uh, try different baits? Well, yeah, when you're searching along, I mean, until you figure out what color or what size they want, yeah, I mean, it's it's always good to try a mix of different things. Hold that up. I mean, show the folks. That's a, that's a beautiful Vilas County walleye yeah. right there. Great job, Rob. Thanks. There we go, John, another one. Another one on the plastic? Yeah, a little bit smaller, but yeah. be a good, a good eater. But you know, so many people who come up north on vacation don't realize you don't have to go real deep for walleyes. So on a weed edge, normally what, what kind of depth are you looking at? Well, it's relative to the lake, obviously. Right. I mean, some of the lakes up here, John, you know, we might have some coontail out to 16, 17 feet. And, you know, some of the shallower lakes, I mean, six or seven feet, uh, you know, would be the edge. So, I mean, it's relative to the lake. But again, looking at the hummingbird there, you can clearly see the weed edge. And you want to position your boat so you're casting right up to that weed edge? Or, or parallel, depending upon, oh. like, this situation where we're at here right now, uh, you know, we have a nice parallel wind on the edge so like I can fish right down the edge you guys are casting right to it you know we can we can spot lock in and out jog back and forth to how close you or how far you want away be uh, from the weed edge itself but typically I like to have some wind either paralleling it or blowing into where we're fishing at hey, hey, Johnny. I'll tell you what, front of the boat is hot today, huh? Well, well I just yeah. never get to use it, you know, and it's, uh, it's bigger than I thought. You need the net there, <laughs> yeah. buddy? Yeah. Come on, Will, you're supposed to be fast on your feet there, man. No, he's fast in the here water. Here he is, here he is, and pretty nice. And you know, that's kind of interesting, Rob. You know, we talked about weed edges all day, but sometimes they'll slide right into the weeds and you're taking those out of the, the weed bed itself. Yeah, yeah, that is a that is a nice little fish right there. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, we're still dealing with kind of some, you know, bearings from this cold front. Um, and, uh, you know, like the last few days, it's been sunny, you know, and fish have been out on the edge, you know. I mean, we're obviously dressed like, uh, you know, not your typical summer day, but uh, a lot of times that's what will happen. Those fish will get pushed back into the weeds. Now, if some of this rain passes, we get some sun, that complete, might completely change the whole situation where they're set up. That's your very next cast? Very next cast, John. Yeah, that is an incredible, and this is, folks, such an example of adapting to certain conditions yeah that one feel pretty good yeah this one's bigger than the last one all right oh yeah oh, oh yeah dandy oh yes yeah oh is that a beautiful walleye rod that is gorgeous buddy and how deep of water is that fish sitting needy <laughs> about 10 feet about 10 yeah, yeah. Okay, but what I'm talking about is adapting, and what we talked about with the previous fish is using the Mega Live. We didn't see a lot of activity on the weed edge itself, and like you say, they slide in there. Do you have to use a, a a lighter jig head, a different presentation, right? Yeah, I mean, I got like an eighth ounce on that plastic and just popping it through there, but. Uh... But yeah, you know, another really nice fish. No, are you kidding me, man? That's a beautiful walleye, buddy. There we go, John. All right, that one Rob. hit close to the boat there. No, that's awesome. But that that's what happens, in, oh, not, not too bad, but that's what happens a lot of times with walleyes, nice is they'll follow your retrieve in, and you always do a couple extra pops of the well, boat. You know, been sitting here looking at the graph, and every now and again, you know, you'd see a, a, a fish that kind of either came in chasing some, you know, when you have some weed hanging on your bait or whatever, and, um, you know, a couple times dropped right down to them and, you know, caught some small ones. But, uh, you know, we got quite a mix of fish out here. I mean, we've actually caught some that we haven't filmed, but, uh, you know, that's another thing, that these fish aren't just necessarily schooling up by size, you know. I mean, we've caught them from 12 inches to 20 inches, right. you know, so. There we go, John. Nicely done there, Rob. Oh, that's a nice walleye right there, buddy. And uh, it's going to give us a little bit of an opportunity to talk about how you're working those shiver minnows. Explain to the folks, they're a pretty heavy bait, aren't they? 
Yeah, I mean, this is actually like the mid-size one. Uh, later in the summer, I actually like using the one ounce one. Okay. Um, but um, Yeah, take a cast and show us what you're doing. So that gets to the bottom quick. Right, right. It, You know, it's kind of like, you know, you're crashing the bottom with it, uh, creating a lot of disturbance, but it's getting a reactionary strike. Um, really simple to use. I mean, honestly, if you're like never jigged before, it's a very easy bait to, to use. Just cast it out. You know, you can just watch your line. Uh, you know, we're in, we're like 15 feet of water right here where I cast it to, you know, boom, it just hit bottom. You just tighten up and just give it a hard pop. Let it fall back, pick up your slack. Sometimes two quick pops, just let it go right back. You can actually feel that heavy jig clunk in the bottom, you know. And, and what does the hit feel like? Uh, it, most of the time, it's a pretty solid whack. Okay. You know, like that one, that one ate it on the drop. Sometimes they'll pin it to the bottom and it'll look like you foul hooked them, but they're crushing it to the bottom. Um, and but it's very an, noticeable. And it's an impulse hit a lot of times. Right, right. Breaking news from Fleet Farm. Folks, check out this deal. When you purchase a Fleet Farm five gallon bucket for only $3.99, you get 15% off anything you can fit inside. Like lures, reels, line, tools, candy, and much more. Offers from June 20th to June 26th. Don't miss out. Ah, you put that Livingston Jerk Master yes, on. Yes, huh? I did. Well, Oh, what do we nice, got here? Nice walleye. Nice walleye. That's right underneath you there, buddy. Can you grab her? Yeah, there I got you it. go. I, I'll tell you what, that Livingston bait there, buddy, has been red hot this yep. spring. Rob's got one on. I got a swim bait on here, John. Okay, buddy, let's see what you got. Uh, I have a little smallmouth. A little smallmouth. We're going to take a look here at this walleye. This Livingston Jerkmaster, hold the wall out of there, there you go, buddy, has been a hot bait this spring, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been awesome. This bait suspends really well in, in this wind. I, I thought just throw on this crankbait a little bit and twitch it over those weeds and pause it, and uh, th this guy certainly liked it. You know what I like on the pause, though, is that has electric, uh, or it has actual bait fish in yeah. distress sound it? to it. Yeah, you can hear it. Let's hear it now. Uh, yeah, but I mean, so that on the pause like that, that can irritate a fish into striking. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that, that's nice walleye yeah, right nice there, walleye. buddy. Good job. Folks, it's finally summertime, and it's hot out there. And I'm at Fleet Farm because they have the best blackfish clothing to keep you cool and dry on the water. Like the Angler hoodie and the Swift long sleeve both with cool charge technology as well as the Blackfish Cast fishing shorts. And to keep you dry, they have the Torrent rain jacket and bibs. To check out the full selection of Blackfish, go to your nearest Fleet Farm store or fleetfarm.com. We were fishing the lakes of Vilas County, a four hour drive from Milwaukee, five hours from Chicago, and three and a half hours from Minneapolis. You are a spring walleye fisherman. Grab some of these. They're an incredible bait. Kaylin's rattling Google eye. Hair jigs. Right there, Ryan. Ooh, that one pounded it. Wow, dude. That is my first cast. Beautiful walleye right there. On the hair, man. Perky, lively, smacking hair jigs. Doesn't get much better, does it? Big fat, chunky spring walleyes. Out here, it takes a certain type. The type who's always the first one out. The type who knows deep down, everyone else is just fishing for second. Enter the Apex Series. See more fish, seize more victories, settle for nothing less. With unrivaled clarity, it's the top fish finder for the most demanding type of angler. Only from Hummingbird. Folks, I've relied on Johnson Pump products for many years, and now they're even better. Check out the new Aqua Void Bilge and the Aqua O2 Aerator. The best advantage with the new products is no tools necessary to replace your motor cartridge. Quick watertight connector and the same easy change cartridge. With the new motor cartridges, we have a high efficiency impeller and a low amp draw motor. To the angler, they're gonna have faster fill of their live wells, 
and they're gonna have better aeration along with a faster evacuation of their bilge. This pump will fit on any boat. It has a multi-configuration inlet port as well as a 360 rotation outlet port. Johnson Pump, reliability on board. Hey, a blind the screw glass. in the back of the boat. It's gonna catch a nut. Here we go, let's see what it is. And, whoa, what do we got there? Looks like a piker. Oh, hey, hold them up for me there, will you, Will? I'll, I'll tell you, you know, it's interesting. There we go. This has been a pretty tough day today, and uh, I'm just glad to catch a fish. Hold the show the folks. Not bad. No, Rod's got one on now. Feels like a walleye. Oh, yeah, nice walleye. All right, good job. Here he comes. Nice walleye. Yeah, that is a nice fish, Rob. Get him in the old clamaroo there. It's That's in the clam. That's a beautiful fish. And you know, we talk about this all the time, Rob, but is it unusual, I suppose, not on these weed edges to have these game fish swimming together? Yeah, I mean, we're still at, you know, the water temps where, you know, a lot of fish can still be along these weed edges, whether it be smallmouth, whether it be pike, whether they be walleyes. I mean, you know, everybody's getting along using the same type of structure. Just hand it to them, Will. I want to show the folks, but uh, no, I'll tell you what, it has, we're, we're dealing with a real Severe June cold front here, yeah. and uh, to be able to still produce fish, man, I, kudos to you guys. Well, you know? and we said we're going to just strictly do all artificials today, whether it's been plastics or it's been crankbaits or it's been shiver minnows. And I mean, honestly, we're not doing bad considering. Hey, you just came back here to look at the hummingbird and you caught yourself. Look uh, at rock that, bass. a rock bass. Even the guide catches rock yeah. bass. But I didn't want to talk to you seriously. Even after we're done finding the fish you still keep the mega live on what's the purpose for that absolutely I'm watching some of these fish go in and out of the weeds and, and that way we can kind of pinpoint our casts and make sure we're getting our baits in front of those fish and uh, if they're not reacting to what we're throwing and then kind of change from there right now that, that fish ate a plastic Rob just caught one on a plastic so that's kind of the program at least for the next few minutes and and what you can do is actually you turn that handle there and you can see where a fish is and actually cast to it absolutely yeah, that this mount here, you can turn that handle and you get a really good idea of which, which angle you should throw your cast at, then uh, you, know, you can plop that lure right on yeah, the Yeah, I hear these, these two guys talking, folks. 20 feet that way, yeah. 30 feet that way, 15 feet that way. It's yep. cool. Yeah, it, it's nice to know you're actually fishing right over the top of one. You are hot up there, buddy. I just missed a nice one. Well, <laughs> and you know what? The wind is dying down, and I'm hoping that makes a difference. You well, see it definitely feels warmer. Yeah, it does. <laughs> There we go, Rob. I'll tell you what, these are gorgeous fish. And that brings me, it brings it up to me, you know, folks that are coming up, you know, to the Vilas County area, you know, when you look at July and August, do you still look, are the weed edges still the deal or do you go deeper for ro on rocks or what generally, what's the, the hot weather pattern? Well, typically like in July, you know, you still have a pretty solid weed bite. You know, we're gonna sometime between now and then we're gonna endure the mega bug hatch stuff that slows things down. But fortunately we have so many different lakes, they don't all hatch and you know, you can stay ahead of it, get behind it type of thing as the, as the summer progresses. Um, August, you know, depending upon lake, you know, you have rock bites, you have deep sand, and then, you know, some of the lakes that have, you know, sand grass, a lot of fish use that, that deep stuff. But generally speaking, as you go into August, you're going to start fishing deeper and deeper and deeper and get into that mid 20 range, you know, sometimes maybe to 30 feet, depending upon water temps and what's going on. A large oh, one. What do we got here got on the old species? A large, a lot, an LMB, a largemouth bass. Here he is, and you can you can you flip that guy or yeah, no? I can get him. Yeah, that's a nice fish. You know, that's what I love about that that Livingston Jerkmaster, Will. It's definitely multi-species, isn't oh, it, buddy? Absolutely. I mean, you, you might even catch a muskie this time of year on, on this lure, especially in a cold front situation. Yeah. But definitely nice fish. Yeah, it Sit is. Get on the paws. And when you release that, I want to well, show the folks how you're working that bait, okay? Yeah, no problem. So I like to crank it down a couple of feet, get that bait down just over the tops of the weeds, and then I'll give it a nice long pause and a couple of slack line twitches. And kind of the key here is pointing that rod tip back at the lure 
after the twitch. Okay. And what that does is it, it makes that bait hunt left and right. And the Livingston is great that way. It likes to move left and right, and that, that really triggers the bites. Folks, it's time now to announce this week's winners of the Fleet Farm John Gillespie's Waters and Woods 2024 Fishing Contest. This week's first winner is Deanna Hoff to Footville, Wisconsin, caught this 15 and a half inch perch on Cascade Lake using a jigging wrap. Josh Petrie of McGuanago, Wisconsin, caught this 41 inch lake trout on Lake Michigan using a jig and plastic. Tom Hens of Poinette, Wisconsin, caught this 30 inch walleye in Oak Harbor, Ohio, on a bandit. Bob Diebold of Rolling Meadows, Illinois, caught this 24 inch largemouth bass in Florida on a crappie jig. And this week's first kid runner is Ainsley Laird of Slinger, Wisconsin, caught her first fish ever a 25 inch northern pike on Rock Lake on a tip-up. And Killian Dolphin of Waterford, Wisconsin caught this eight and a half inch bluegill on the Fox River using a red worm. Each week I shop online at fleetfarm.com to check out the latest deals. This week save $15 on the Angle Live Bait Cooler with pump on sale for $64. 99 and 25% off the Plano Sportsman trunks on sale starting at 1724. Meet Chris McGillis of McGillis Weimer, experienced personal injury lawyers. A lot of the people that watch your show, I mean, those are the type of customers and clients that we have, right? I mean, good people care about their community, they're passionate about the outdoors. That's just been a way to have a bond with somebody in a relationship. To truly tell a, a client's story to a jury or a judge and be persuasive, I really think you got to be able to walk in their shoes and, and, and be able to explain why what happened to them matters. Hey, I changed baits finally. Yeah, you know? I told you. Put on uh, a doing paddle. What you guys are doing? I don't know what this is. Uh, what do we got here? A big old smallie. Is it a nice smallmouth? Yeah. Okay. But no, seriously, folks. Whoa, that's a nice fish, actually. Seriously, folks, changing the bait was the difference on that fish right there. And uh, that's a real nice smallmouth. Now these fish, oops, let me grab them. <laughs> if you if you want, Rob, I'll grab the fish and you can, or you grab the fish and I'll grab the bait. There you go. Yeah. That's a nice fish. But um, you know, this is that Kalen's tickle tail. Yep. You know, with the paddle tail, and the paddle tail is crucial, huh? It, it's been this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, okay. And what I did with that, you know, instead of doing my regular rip in that, is just a couple of reels and let it drop. And is that drop and that's enticing isn't it yeah no that's that's what we've been working i got one on back here rob it might be a small mouth it's kind of hard to tell you know okay let's see you're fighting good though well maybe as long as you don't lose it we'll find out yeah oh nice small mouth there guys nope. <laughs> get the net cut on this there we go here we go, here we go, here we go. Yeah, hold them up if you would there, yeah. Will. A uh, pretty nice fish there. And, uh, you know, we talked about it all program long. You guys do these weed edges. Everything that eats swims along those, right? Absolutely. And Will, nice. what, what do you recommend? Uh, you know, you got, you got to try a lot of different baits on these things, right? Yeah, you've got the jerk minnow here. We've been throwing some paddle tails. We've thrown the, the Livingston jerk master, and, and uh, we've just been kind of bouncing around catching fish. So, Willie, Will, uh, you're on the bass here, yeah. buddy, huh? Got that jerk master on. Oh, yeah. Is that on that Livingston again? Yeah. Another largey. Oh, really? You need the net, or can you grab him? Oh, he's got fish following him. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome, buddy. Let's see them. Oh yeah, that's you know those are fun, and you know when you're on a guide trip and you get into those, well, customers like that, don't they? Yeah, absolutely, and they fight well, and and it's a super great hit. It uh, thumps really nice when you when you pause this jerk master. Those fish usually go crazy right on that pause. Nothing says party like a hot tub party, especially with the Johnsonville Summer Shandy brats. Start off by cooking your Johnsonville Summer Shandy Brats low and slow on the grill for about 20 minutes. Then caramelize onions and butter and bay leaves. Once that's caramelized, add your Summer Shandy beer. Once that's to temperature, you can add your brats and whenever you're ready to have a brat, it's going to be perfect. 
So what's so great about this hot tub is that you can eat it whenever you want because you know it will be hot and ready to eat. Let's give it a try. Oh my gosh, delicious. Johnsonville Summer Shandy Brat Hot Tub. Find the recipe at johnsonville.com. Yay, Robbie. I uh, haven't seen it yet, John. I'm hoping it's going to be a walleye to end our day. We've had bass back to back. Let's see, here it is. It and we is. have ourselves oh. a nice walleye, Rob. Nice. Hey, you know, I want to explain to the folks what a great job you and Will did today. I mean, when you've got, you know, 15, 20 degree temperature drops and, and in June a high in the upper 50s, that, that just measures tough fishing. And you guys got it done with nice fish. Yeah. No, actually, I mean, we everything we've caught today has been pretty solid. You and know? you showed the folks at home a lot of different artifacts artificial techniques and, and weed edge techniques today and uh, but normally on a guide trip you've got live bait along which we didn't have today. Well, right well we decided to do that you know uh, when we talked about it that you know we were confident we could pull it off with artificials and you know we didn't expect to be freezing our butts off by the end of the day you know it was actually not so bad this morning you know. Yeah. Well, hey, buddy, uh, I'm going to get an order to go at Fibbers and head home. All right. Sounds good. For a great place to stay in the Northwoods, call St. Germain Lodge. That phone number is 715-542-3433. Pete, I'm getting too old for this. So, John, you haven't heard of Brian's Custom Steps? Oh, Pete, those are awesome. How can I get a set? Yeah, I love these big no-slip platforms, and they're made right here in Wisconsin. For more information on Brian's Custom Steps, call 920-315-0333. There's never been a better time to get a new R-Max than right now during the Yamaha Get Out and Ride sales event. Take advantage of our amazing deals on the entire Wolverine R-Max family of side-by-sides during the Yamaha Get Out and Ride sales event. You can now get as low as 3.99 APR for 84 months or up to $3,500 customer cash on your new Wolverine R-Max. And folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. I don't know where we're going to fish yet. We will find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying John Gillespie's Waters and Woods.